snapshot side. Now today what we're going to be looking at is the process of respiration. Now hopefully by the end of this video you're able to one state why humans and other organisms need energy. We then want to go on to look at the equations for aerobic respiration, closely followed by the equations for anaerobic respiration, in particular in both yeast and in humans. And finally we want to compare aerobic respiration with anaerobic respiration. Now all of this will be rounded up by us looking at some practical examples of how you could be asked about respiration in your exam. So let's get right into it. Now the first question we really want to start to ask ourselves is why do our cells need energy? Now as you guys can see there are a range of reasons why we need energy. So for example we need energy for our muscles to contract, cell division requires energy, active transport requires energy, transmitting nerve impulses and producing heat of course requires energy. So what I will say is you guys just pause the video and make some brief notes on why our, why our body requires energy. Now this energy really comes from the food that we eat. This food is broken down in the digestive system. For those of you who have forgotten about the digestive system, go back to your previous notes to refresh your memory. Okay? And we get glucose. Glucose is the main nutrient that allows us to produce energy. Now this glucose is broken down in respiration, and respiration actually uses en uh, enzymes. Now, respiration is an exothermic reaction, okay, as it releases heat. And then the two types of respiration that we're going to look at are aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. So let's start by looking at aerobic respiration. So aerobic respiration is the process of our body using glucose and oxygen to produce energy. The glucose comes from your digestive system, the oxygen comes from your respiratory system, okay, and carbon dioxide and water are produced. Most importantly, at the end of this, energy is produced. We get quite a lot of energy from aerobic respiration. Now, as I mentioned, aerobic respiration requires oxygen, okay? Now, I, I showed you previously the word equation for aerobic respiration, but it's also just as important that you know the symbol equation for aerobic respiration. C6H12O6 represents glucose, plus 6O2 represents oxygen, goes to 6CO2 plus 6H2O, okay? Now, what I would say is again, pause this uh, video and make some notes on the word equation and the balance symbol equation for aerobic respiration. Now, as I mentioned, aerobic respiration produces energy by combining glucose and oxygen. But anaerobic respiration does not use oxygen. Imagine that N in anaerobic respiration stands for no oxygen, okay? Now, if I was to look at anaerobic respiration, it doesn't produce as much energy as aerobic respiration, okay? However, it, is, uh, it still uses glucose and it produces lactic acid in humans. And of course, energy at the start, at the end. Now, we can respire anaerobically for short periods of time. And this process is relatively inefficient, which is why we can't do it on a long period of time, okay? But it's useful in situations, for example, back in the day when we may have, to, may have had to run from danger, okay? Or even in a 100 meter sprint, okay? Now, if we look at anaerobic respiration in plants or even fungi, for example, yeast, the yeast converts glucose into ethanol instead of lactic acid and carbon dioxide. So this is the word equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast. Now anaerobic respiration in yeast is known as fermentation. You can see a keyword there. And fermentation is really useful, for example, for helping us think, to do things such as uh, making bread. But it's the carbon dioxide that's produced in fermentation that actually makes the bread rise. Okay? Now, again, just as important, you have the symbol equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast. So again, pause the video, okay, and make notes on the word and symbol equation for the process of yeast anaerobically respiring. Now, if we were to look at the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration, aerobic respiration requires oxygen. However, anaerobic respiration does not require oxygen. Now, as we mentioned before, lactic acid is produced at the end of anaerobic respiration, sorry. However, lactic acid is not made um, during aerobic respiration. Now, large amounts of energy are provided to us by aerobic respiration. However, much less, less energy is released 
per each molecule of glucose in anaerobic respiration, okay? Which makes anaerobic respiration less efficient. Um, carbon dioxide is produced at the end of aerobic respiration in humans. However, carbon dioxide is not produced at the end of anaerobic respiration in humans. Don't forget um, the word equation for anaerobic respiration in yeast is slightly different to in humans, okay? Now, aerobic respiration occurs in the mitochondria of cells, whereas anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm. Alright, so it's really important to pause the video okay, and make notes from the key differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Okay? Now, as we mentioned before, okay, the site of aerobic respiration is the mitochondria, whereas anaerobic respiration occurs in the cytoplasm of cells. So tissues and organs that need a lot of energy, you will find they have a high number of mitochondria. Okay? Now, if we want to look at some practical examples of how you may be asked about aerobic respiration or how you might be asked about the uptake of oxygen during aerobic respiration. You may be given apparatus such as similar to that on the board, okay? And you may be given uh, small animals. It could be woodlice, it could be locusts, etc. And what, what it's showing is the uptake of oxygen by the movement of an oil uh, drop, okay, in this capillary tube. Right? Now, in this tube at the bottom, we've got some soda lime. Soda lime is used to absorb the carbon dioxide in this experiment so that it does not affect the results that are being produced. Again, you can have a control um, uh, sample that you're using. And this investigation can really be manipulated to show you the effect of temperature on the rate of germinating, germinating seeds. Sorry. So all you simply have to do okay, is swap to small animals, or germinated seeds, okay, and place the apparatus in some sort of uh, water bar, etc., to control the temperature. And you can show how respiration is affected by temperature change. Remember, what we mentioned before, aerobic respiration involves enzymes. Enzymes are affected by temperature change, as you learned before previously. Okay. You may also be asked uh, about the production of carbon dioxide by anaerobic respiration. So in this example, you've got the apparatus, okay, and you've got a boiling tube. The first thing you do is you use um, water, okay, and you boil the water. And this is to get rid of any excess um, air, okay, which could affect this experiment. You then add sh a sh sugar, and you allow the sugar solution now to cool down, as we're going to be using yeast, and we don't want to be making the enzymes in the yeast, okay? Now, all we simply do is we want to determine if carbon dioxide is being produced in, from the yeast. Don't forget what we said in the word equation, carbon dioxide is produced at the end of anaerobic respiration um, in yeast, okay? Now, we've got lime water here, and don't forget lime water turns cloudy in the presence of carbon dioxide, okay? So this is another way that you may be asked to investigate um, the production of carbon dioxide by anaerobic respiration, okay? So, Hopefully by the end of this video, you're able to state why humans and other organisms need energy. It's really important that you know the equations for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration, thinking about both humans and yeast. And finally, it's important to know the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Okay? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and revise. Mr. Ashoni, signing out. Hey.